Welcome to this Getting Started video, which introduces how you can connect to your existing data in the WebFocus Business User Edition. Let's consider a relational database in your organization. Your data may reside in a single summary table or view containing all your measures. This is your numerical data, such as revenue and cost of goods sold, and dimensions. These are attributes about your measures, for example, product, geography, and time. Alternatively, your data may reside in several tables, a fact table containing measures and one or more dimension tables. In this case, you will likely have to reference the tables by creating a star schema. This video demonstrates how the Connect to Data wizard can create a star schema. In this video, we are signed in as the manager user and have launched the Connect to Data wizard from the Connect to Data option on the Getting Started page. Connecting to data consists of three steps. One, configuring an adapter to establish a connection to your data source. Two, importing metadata by selecting the specific table or tables you want to use. Based on the result of this step, one or more synonyms that describe your data will be automatically created. Note that a synonym is also referred to as a master file. Three, editing and customizing the metadata to address your reporting and data discovery requirements. Let's get started by creating a new adapter. WebFocus Business User Edition offers many types of intelligent adapters to connect to any data source in your organization. Certain adapters allow you to configure more than one connection. For example, you may have multiple Microsoft SQL Server installations across different systems. The SQL Server adapter allows you to configure a connection for each of these instances. In this example, our data resides in Microsoft SQL Server 2012. In the Connection Name field, type a descriptive name for your connection. In the Server field, specify the host name of the system where Microsoft SQL Server is installed. From the Security drop-down list, you can select the type of security that you want to use with your adapter. Available options include Explicit, Password Pass-Through, and Trusted. Since this example uses a personal Microsoft SQL Server environment, we are going to select Explicit and enter a valid user ID and password. Click Test to verify your connection details to the specified Microsoft SQL Server instance. If the test is successful, information about your connection is returned, which opens in a new tab. This indicates that you have successfully configured your adapter. Close this tab. Click Configure to add this adapter and connection to your environment. The Configure Connections pane opens. Click Next. The Select Connection to Create Synonyms pane opens. This brings us to Step 2, where you can select the specific tables or objects you want to use. Notice that the adapter connection for Microsoft SQL Server 2012 is listed and selected by default. Also notice that the WebFocus Business User Edition is pre-configured with a hyperstage adapter, delimited flat file adapter, and flat file adapter. These are used for data upload and discovery. Click Next. The Select Synonym Candidates pane opens. Here you can identify the specific database object you want to use for reporting and data discovery purposes. In this pane, there are a number of filters that you can set to restrict your scope. For example, from the Restrict Object Type 2 drop-down list, you can select Tables, Views, and Other Objects, External SQL Scripts, Stored Procedures, and Table Log Records. By default, Tables, Views, and Other Objects is selected, this option is also used most often. From the Select a Database drop-down list, you can choose a specific database from the configuration to which you have connected. You can also filter by owner or object name in the corresponding fields. For example, if your data pertains to retail operational data, but you can't remember the exact table names, you can simply use a wildcard in the Object Name field to find these tables. Click Next. The Create Synonym pane opens and lists the result of your filtering and restricted object types. Here, you can select the synonym that will be used by the wizard. Each synonym that appears on this list is given a default name, which is based on the table name. You can edit or customize this synonym name if you want. You can also manage and enhance the definition of your metadata to simplify and enrich future analytics. For example, in the Customize Data Type Mappings area, you can Fine-tune the integer precision, float precision, and float scale of the synonym. Decompose date fields into their month, quarter, and year components. This is enabled by default. Set the format of date fields. Activate geographic role assignments in your data. 
choose the default Create Metadata. Overwrite existing synonyms that may already exist from a previous connection. For more information on any of these settings, click on the Help icon. Click Next to create the synonym based on your specifications. The Create Synonym Status pane opens. By default, any synonym that is created from the Getting Started page is created in an application folder called Getting Started. This is indicated in the Application field. Below this field is the status of the Create Synonym process. Click Next. In the Categorize Fields into Measures, Dimensions, and Hierarchies pane, you can review how the Connect to Data wizard interpreted your data. Here you can manage and enhance your metadata as required to simplify and enrich future analytics. The Measure Dimension view displays a default set of measure groups and dimension hierarchies. Measures are numeric fields that you typically sum, aggregate, or average in your reports. Common examples of measures would be revenue, quantity, or profit. Any numeric fields that are found in your data by the Connect to Data wizard are automatically grouped under the Measure Groups folder. Non-measure fields that you may want to access in your reports are listed under the Dimensions folder. Notice that the Connected Data Wizard automatically created hierarchies for your data too. A hierarchy is a navigation path that WebFocus Business User Edition uses when you want to drill down to more detailed information. By default, the last synonym created is displayed, which is our fact table. Fact tables have measures but no dimensions. In this example, our dimension table is WRD underscore WF underscore retail underscore product and contains product related data related to the fact table. Now we must create a star schema by referencing the dimension table using a join. You can join data in the modeling view, which allows you to drag and drop to define a join. In the metadata group, click joins. Drag the dimension table from the application tree to the join canvas. Next, Drag ID underscore product in the dimension table to ID underscore product in the WRD underscore WF underscore retail underscore sales table. A line appears and the tables are now joined on ID underscore product. You can modify the join attributes easily by right clicking the join indicator line and using the available menu options. Since we don't have any additional tables to add to our example, let's return to the categorize fields pane. To view your changes, Click Reset to default. This refreshes your view and displays the star schema we created. You can also use this option to undo all changes back to the initial categorization of measures and dimensions. Now you can see that the measures and dimensions from the dimension table have been added as a result of the join. You can also use the right click fields to access options to create new measure groups, rename measures or dimensions, create and remove hierarchies, or view sample data. For example, if you do not want a specific measure or dimension to be available in your reporting, right-click the component and click Hide. Although a dimension may be hidden, understand that it still exists in your core data. This means that it is no longer visible in the logical view or in InfoAssist Plus when you create content. To rearrange the order in which measures and dimensions appear in your reporting, you can drag and drop them in this pane. For more information about the options that are available in this view, click See More at the top of the pane, or reference the online help. Once you have defined your measures and dimensions, click Next. Type a name for your synonym, and then click Save. The What Would You Like to Do Next dialog box opens, which means that your connected data source is now available for use in WebFocus Business User Edition. Here, you can choose your next steps, which include creating new content, such as reports or charts, using InfoAssist Plus against your newly connected data. Returning to the page where you first launched the wizard. For more detailed information about how you can use the WebFocus Business User Edition, access the online help or visit the Information Center. From the Information Center, you can access additional Getting Started resources, such as the Technical Library and Video Assist Technical Video Repository.